Hello friends, welcome to my channel again and today we will discuss the quick shoulder examination which we will do in our routine OPD patients and first is look and as we normally do examination in all patients first we see from front and then from the back from front we will first see the sternoclavicular area for any swelling or protuberance then and the clavicular and acromioclavicular joint area any deltoid wasting and after that from behind we will see the suprascapular area and the infrascapular area for any muscle wasting another thing to look for is scapular dyskinesia ask the patient to forward flex and bring the arms back as you can see here that there is abnormal protuberance of the inferior medial border of the left scapula here you can see another patient he is having bilateral scapular dyskinesia on the left side you can see abnormal prominence of the medial and the inferior medial border and on the right side the inferior medial corner prominence is there so a patient can have either unilateral or bilateral scapular dyskinesia and if you want me to make a dedicated video on scapular dyskinesia i can do so just comment in the comments section we will move on to feel in feel we will see the tenderness in the various shoulder important regions first is the coracoid as you know where to feel the coracoid we will see the coracoid tenderness and after that external rotate the humerus 15 degree and we will feel the long head of biceps here you can easily feel the long head of biceps tendon in the bicipital groove after that we will move on to the anterior little corn which is the cord man's point this is the tenderness is here is normally present in subacromial bursitis or subacromial impingement after that we move on to the posterior lateral corner of the chromium and we see for tenderness at the soft spot which is just below and medial to the posterior lateral corner now we move on to move in move we will see the various movements at the shoulder joint first there will be forward flexion and abduction and after that external rotation and internal rotation both at sides and in 90 degree abduction at sides we will assess the stiffness of the coracohumeral ligament and the superior glenohumeral ligament and in 90 degree abduction if we do external rotation we will assess the anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament and in internal rotation 90 degree internal rotation we will assess the posterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament and the clinical significance here is that adhesive capsulitis we check at the sites because external rotation is reduced due to involvement of the contents of the rotator interval which are superior glenohumeral ligament and the coracohumeral ligament and in 90 degree abduction we normally check for glenohumeral internal rotation deficit GERD and compare it to the opposite side which is normally seen in throwing athletes and then we see the internal rotation at the back and compare it to the opposite side which is normally classified as on to the side till the buttocks or at the ls joint or till the mid lumbar region or the inferior angle of scapula mid scapular region or the top of scapula and now comes special test special test we will move from up till down first comes the ac joint then the subacromial space then the supraspinatus tendon and then the intraarticular components now we will see the AC joint. AC joint is checked by cross body adduction as shown here. If there is pain, it means cross body adduction test is positive and AC joint is affected. After that, subacromial space. Subacromial space is checked by needs test and needs impingement sign. This is needs impingement sign. We passively flex the arm to 180 degree and if there is pain, it means that needs impingement sign is positive. Another is impingement test. In impingement test, we we give a local anesthetic injection in subacromial space, and it, and if after giving injection, we again forward flex the arm, and if the pain is gone, it means that the needs impingement test is positive. Next is Hawking test. We abduct and internal rotate the arm, and if the pain is there, it means Hawking test is positive. And now we will assess the supraspinatus tendon. We will ask the patient to abduct and internal rotate the arms and push the arms upward against resistance and if there is pain it means there is supraspinatus tendonitis and we can also check for the power of the supraspinatus tendon here. 
Sometimes it is very difficult to differentiate between supraspinate tendinitis and the rotator cuff tears and it requires great expertise in that matter. Now we move in articularly and we first check superior labrum where these slab tears occur and the test is O'Brien test. We forward flex, pronate and adduct the arm and ask the patient to push the arm upwards against resistance. If there is pain, we cross check by supinating the arm and then pushing it upwards and if the pain gets relieved with supination it means O'Brien test is positive. Next is long head of biceps which is attached to the superior labrum. We check it by speed test. We ask the patient to forward flex the arm 90 degree and supinate it and push it upwards against resistance. If there is pain at the long head of biceps it means speed test is positive. Next we will check the power of the cuff. We have already checked supraspinatus power. Now we proceed with external rotation stress test which checks the power of infraspinatus and teres minor both combined and then the internal rotation stress test which tests the power of the subscapularis. This is the correct way to do it. For both the tests we have to ask the patient to touch the elbows against the body and then give the external rotation and internal rotation stress. And to isolate infraspinatus from teres minor, we ask the patient whether forward flex or abduct the arm to 90 degree and elbow to 90 degree and then keep this position like this. And if the teres minor is weak, the patient will not be able to maintain the position and the arm will drop. Next is belly press test. We ask the patient to press his belly like this and while keeping the elbow at the side and the modification is that we can give resistance while the patient is pressing the belly. This way we can check the subscapularis power. And next test is beer head test. Here the patient keeps his hand over the opposite shoulder and presses it down while we give the resistance and this way also we can check the subscapularis power. Next we will see the instability. Instability is either anterior, posterior or multidirectional instability. We will concentrate more on the anterior instability as it is the most common and the first test is the apprehension test. We abduct and external rotate the arm and ask the patient if he is feeling any pain or apprehension that the patient that the shoulder will dislocate. And next what we will do is we will push the humeral head backwards which is known as the relocation test and the patient will feel a sense of relief and then we will release the backward push and then the patient will be having apprehension again this is known as release test and this is most specific and sensitive for anterior dislocation next is load and shift test it can be done either supine or standing i prefer it supine uh, I grab the patient's arm in my armpit I like, like this and abduct is 30 to 60 degree and then I give anterior to posterior force to see the translation of humeral head and I can see both anterior posterior and superior inferior laxity and then I will grind the humeral head in all direction to see if there is any catching of the labrum. Next is job test for posterior instability. Uh, we will actually load the humerus like this and slowly adduct the humerus and we can see if the humeral head moves posteriorly. And there is grading for this laxity which I will write in the description and I, as I told it can be done both supine or standing. For inferior laxity there is the sulcus test. We pull the humerus downwards like this and if there is an excessive inferior laxity there will be a depression just below the acromion and uh, we can also grade that which I will again write it in the description. I hope you like this video and if you want any detailed examination on any single part of the examination I will do that just write it in the comments box and if you like the video subscribe like comment and share and see you in next video thank you.